Mr.'s grill the vendors. Is mobile ready for RTB? Is RTB ready for mobile? I'd like to invite Kevin Joyce, who's media director at Liquid Advertising, to uh, bring his panel up to the stage. Thanks for staying till the uh, bitter end. Um, we'll try to keep this pretty lively. Um, just introducing the panel real quick. Uh, Paul Gelb from Mopub. Uh, Krishna, last name. Zibermanian. There you go, uh, from Belty. Uh, Joy Kavanaugh from Pubmatic. Um, Robert Baldwin. Peter Baldwin. Peter Baldwin. The other Baldwin. <laughs> the other one, the Paul uh, From Smato and David Balbanian from uh, Turn. I didn't know my father was on this panel. Uh, actually, it's Mark Balabanian, but uh, oh. I'll, I'll oh, make, I did manage to. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll make sure my father uh, gets the credit for, for that. There you go. Anyway, um, first, because uh, I'm not sure how familiar you all you all are with uh, who these guys are and where they fit into the landscape, I'll let them talk about uh, what what niche they're filling in this space. Uh, I'll start with you. Sure. Uh, Paul Galbs, I'm head of strategy at Mopub, and I focus on all of our product enhancements uh, with a specialized focus on all of our tier one initiatives to bring more tier one dollars and inventory onto the platform. And I came over to Mopub from uh, Razorfish where I started the mobile practice there and headed up for six years. Um, so I'm, I'm the CMO for Velti. It was also one of the co-founders of MobClicks. MobClicks is a mobile ad exchange that was acquired by Velti towards the end of 2010. Uh, we connect publishers with ad networks and advertisers through a um, exchange marketplace to help them make as much money as possible. Hi, my name is Joy Kavanaugh from Pubmatic. I'm head of real-time bidding and agency development um, on the buy side. Uh, Pubmatic is a sell-side platform that enables publishers to monetize their digital assets across platforms, mobile display, I connected TV, video. So Peter Baldwin, GM Americas of Smarto. Uh, Smarto is a supply side platform for mobile. We have 75,000 different app developers worldwide. Um, we make money for those app developers through a variety of different mechanisms, including um, mobile RTB. I'm uh, Mark Balabanian, uh, Senior Director of Business Development at Turn. Um, uh, I see several turn clients and turn partners here in the audience and, and on the panel. So uh, I presume some of you know us. We are um, a cloud-based platform for uh, buying um, and uh, executing digital campaigns across uh, display, video, mobile, and social. Uh, within our platform, we have a very robust data management. Uh, capability and that stores and segments enormous quantities of data which can be used for targeting, insights, uh, analytics, and attribution. Um, at Turn, what I do is I, uh, I kind of lead our entry into emerging channels. Uh, so I've been on the front lines of uh, our push into mobile, uh, working actually with everyone on this panel as suppliers uh, to our platform. So I'm really excited to be here uh, with you all and have a chance to share some of that frontline uh, experience and insight. Great. Thanks. So just a quick showing of hands. Uh, how many folks here are currently buying on mobile? OK. Um, anybody here buying on mobile RTB? OK. Pretty small. Um, so I think it, take it for granted that everybody up here is pretty bullish on mobile RTB. And their answer to is mobile ready for RTB is yes. Um, so we'll just assume they wouldn't be here if not. Um, but um, I want to kind of take a step back and situate why this panel would even exist. and. Uh, talk about what was going on, what's happened in the last sort of six to eight months um, to bring 
mobile RTB, uh, where it is today and where, where it was, where people might have some questions about it. So I think, uh, Mark, you want to talk about where, uh, what was happening back in the old days? <laughs> back in the old days, uh, yeah. 12 months ago. Yeah, let's, let's go back there. So about 12 months ago, Paul and I were on a panel in New York. Um, similar topic, different conference, we won't mention. Uh, who, who put that one on, um, certainly wasn't uh, you know, on, on this level of attendance, but we had a pretty packed house um, interested in the topic, which was mobile RTB and is it ready? Um, and I think at that time, um, there was a lot less uh, that I could say about it than I can now. And, and one, one example I'll give is just uh, the scale of inventory uh, that, that was available about 12 months ago uh, was, was roughly uh, you know, 10, 20% of what we are seeing today. Literally uh, two or three exchanges that our platform was, uh, was able to plug into. Now we're seeing 10 times that amount um, available, not just domestically, but globally as well. So um, in, in order for a platform like Turn to be able to use our data science and our algorithms to find the best outcomes for advertisers, we really need a lot of reach and really need to be able to go out into large pools of inventory and make those buying decisions. And so uh, the evolution in the past 12 months just on the inventory side alone has really enabled us to um, you know, leverage our technology for our advertiser clients uh, in RTB. Yeah, I mean, I would say, so Mopub is, uh mobile only and so we're really at an exchange and ad server and our exchange has been around for uh just under a year and a half and uh already it reaches 300 million uniques uh there's 45 billion impressions uh, a month when around six months ago or even nine months ago there was a handful of tier one brands that we saw advertising on the platform there's now uh over 200 million uh if you look just from december to january our uniques increased 90 million from uh 210 to, to 300, so the- are These global numbers? These are global numbers. So the trajectory has been uh, enormous. I mean, most uh, stuff is driven from the US anyway, so it tends to be US heavy in, in general. Um, but it, there were at Razorfish a year ago, or a year and a half ago, there probably were not any clients. There definitely were not any clients doing mobile um, RTB. Um, I think they were just trying to figure out a, a lot of stuff. I think now there's a, a bunch of factors we'll probably talk to um, today, but just seeing that, that trajectory and that support is not just, um, is it ready? It, it, it's happening. And even the CPG brands that are starting to ramp up in a significant way in, in mobile um, are also the ones at the same time have started to ramp up in a significant way in, in RTB and those two forces amongst others are, are starting to come together. So uh, <clears throat> I can give you guys a little perspective on, on how MobClicks evolved on the RTB front as well. We first launched RTB you know, completely on mobile in about October of 2010. Um, there, were, there were two to three different de demand partners that we had bidding uh, on the exchange at that time. They were completely outsmarting the rest of the, the demand partners that we had. You know, at that time, probably 30, 30 other demand partners. Um, and these were smaller, um, smaller sort of mobile startups in the space that were really jumping onto RTB and really trying to trip to leverage that data, mostly for cost for uh, sort of cost per app downloads, and um, definitely outsmarting a lot of people. So we we sort of put the brakes on it, waited till some of the bigger um, the bigger mobile players started uh, buying on RTB, and and I think that the trend that we noticed is. Um, a lot of the larger mobile ad networks took a really long time to migrate over to RTB. Um, and you know, we started to s see um, the online DSPs migrate much quicker. And you know, they, they already had the technology, fairly simple for them to, j to jump into to the mobile space. Um, and you know, I, I think that the challenge that we saw was the mobile ad networks had a lot of the performance um, inventory uh, at the time that was being leveraged on um, RTB and but they just didn't have the technology and you know so that was that was some of the stuff that we've seen now we're definitely seeing a lot more people bidding you know there's over 40 people bidding on on the exchange using RTB and it, seeing it grow very nicely 
And from Pomatic's perspective, we're extremely bullish on RTB for mobile. Um, we are one of the innovators of RTB back in 2009. And looking at the landscape today, um, we incubated mobile about two years ago, had an acquisition, and have established a robust engineering team to really make sure that we set the standards for, for RTB mobile moving forward. Um, what we have seen over the past, I'd say, 12 12 months is a huge trajectory in publisher adoption. Large publishers want to monetize their mobile inventory, and they're seeing RTB as a standard for that. So it's a way for publishers to create a business model around uh, monetizing their mobile assets. And that's a huge shift in where publishers' mindset has come from a year ago to now. Uh, and really encouraged from the buy side, what I've seen is you know large um, agency trading desks are fundamentally looking at cross-platform initiatives to reach the consumer on a one-to-one -one basis and using real-time bidding parameters to, to reach the right audience at the right time. So I guess just completing this, um, Smarto was probably a little later to market with, with RTB than my colleagues here in the panel, but um, we'd actually were part of the open RTB standard formulating exactly what, what our mobile RTB is about. And um, since introducing it was really to market, it was about nine months ago. Um, the, it's been a significant growth. It's now over a third of our business. It's um, growing incredibly fast as far as you know month on month growth. Um, the Americas has been smart as very international business, so we've got um, you know um, Asia, Europe, um, but the Americas business has grown to over half of Smarto's business now on the back of RTB. So it's been actually a significant contribution for us. And now, I mean, I don't know if this is spoiling one of your questions, but you know we're seeing it now being adopted in Europe and Asia as aggressively as we've seen in um, in, in in the Americas. Uh, just uh, putting myself in the in the agency perspective and wondering, uh, you might ask after hearing these wonderful things, like why would anybody not be using mobile RTB? And I can just kind of run through some of the common uh, knee-jerk reactions to why people might be hesitant, and um, and see if you guys have any answers for it. Um, you know, one would be, well, you know, um, the the targeting is really not there. That just might be somebody, something, you know, they say, oh, you know, compared to what we're doing on the web with retargeting and, um, you know, cookie-based things, uh, you know, there's no cookies on mobile, so how are these people, you know, what are we doing here? And when we do it, are we actually violating some sort of privacy terms or something like that? Can, can I ask just one clarifying question about that question? You may. <laughs> is, is that a concern or criticism of mobile RTB or, or of mobile in general? Like is that, I suppose is it's that a comparison? Mobile, well, a display suppose, versus mobile comparison. It's, it's a display versus mobile, but it's also a um, you know when they're wondering what kind of you know value is being added to an impression in real time, like what's what piece of data is being layered onto it to say, oh, okay, that's worth more to me, rather than just saying, hey, you know, jump tap, can you run you know X number of impressions against males 18 to 34 targeted in California or something like that? They might be wondering what what do you guys really bring extra to the table? on the platform. I don't think it's, <clears throat> it's either of those. I think there's uh, major factors are there's uh, still some tension between planners who are uh, playing stuff directly and, and trading desks and, and who owns what. And so I think uh, when you have uh, times of change and the way people used to do stuff and the way uh, they currently do stuff and it's pretty complicated structures when you look at an agency holding company where everything is centered around that one um, desk. So there's still uh, some stuff to be ironed out about, you know, how you plan in, in which uh, sort of ways, let alone in, in desktop when it comes to actual mobile. Um, the, the second part is if, if anyone's ever worked at a really large company and uh, where a lot of revenue came from one area and then uh, it went, there was an opportunity in a new area, um, it's hard to get resources and, and product development. So to have the, the trained desk actually be able to take their platform and execute on mobile, it, it takes a long time, not only because um, you're shifting from, from desktop to mobile, but because as a trading desk, you're dealing with 
uh, five different agencies and uh, as well as a you know governing global body um, that all have their their hands involved in what you're doing so um, that tends to be more of a delay necessarily than a, a cookie issue which right. and in most cases is a non-issue as mobile web um, at least web when it came to mobile was not the big opportunity where 90, 90 some odd percent of spend is in is in apps and and uh, the cookie issue is not a, a big deal I think after the whole ringleader incident when it came to mobile and, and privacy and there was uh, a lot of eyebrows raised. Um, there are, are been plenty of lawyers involved in plenty of discussions and with IFA there's uh, a significant um, level of, of comfort now of at least having the, uh, the opt out and, and the reset in place in, in some manner were the two areas that the lawyers were looking for. So mm -hmm. it's less about that as just uh, large organizations in a complex ecosystem you know, getting things up and, and running. It still hasn't been that long, if you think about right. it. Right, right. Um, what, uh, in terms of the data stuff that you guys, you know, are providing on the platform, what's bringing the big, what, what's the big attraction? So, part of the reason why I asked that question about are we comparing, you know, display to, to mobile or, or, or are we displaying mobile RTB to mobile is really, is really around, around that differentiation. So, what we're, what we're seeing uh, our clients adopting are some of the, the very mobile specific uh, implementations um, of, of, of the channel, right? So. Um, while they may not be able to execute at scale the exact same tactics uh, that they do in display, uh, what they're what they're what they're finding a lot of um, you know ROI from are uh, mobile mobile specific tactics and and uh, for example, um, leveraging the real time location of the consumer uh, in order to drive outcomes. We have about. A third of all of our campaigns are hyperlocal or using some some form of geofencing. Uh, that includes uh, clients that are targeting retail stores where they know their products are in stock. That includes clients like YellowPages.com. That's a multi-channel uh, client. They are running thousands of small campaigns for local plumbers, dog walkers, you know, maids, lawyers, you name it. They're running them in display and in mobile. They've been able to enhance their spins from those advertisers by offering in that hyper-local hyper um, opportunity. In addition to these um, you know, location targeting examples, we've got telcos that are targeting device type and are targeting uh, um, carrier attributes for upsell and also for conquesting. And then we've seen a lot of success um, for some of our national retail clients, national automotive services clients that are doing uh, downloadable coupons where they're getting much higher um, download rates from mobile than they ever got from the web. So I think um, what's, what, what we're seeing is that the buyers and advertisers that are really having a great experience in mobile are the ones that are executing mobile specific campaigns and not necessarily trying to repeat um, best practices from display. Mm -hmm. But I think what we have to think about, um, Mark, is that you know, mobile is still at its infancy in terms of real-time bidding. I mean, we did a show of hands, and there was probably about two or three people that actually adopted it. So it is really at an early adoption, adoption phase in the market. And what I think I've learned over you know, the course of um, several years of working in mobile is that you know, it was a very fragmented market. It's, it, ad networks had different technologies to execute campaigns, which made it extremely difficult for agencies to manage operations. And what RTB does is it creates a layer of normalization for agencies to deploy their campaigns. So we really have to say, you know, we've got great campaigns being served by telcos. We, we're, we're seeing this success today. It definitely has made inroads over the past year. And what I think everybody on this panel is really saying is, you know, the adoption is there, and we're really eager to see the return where, where we've seen the greatest success is not just in mobile only campaigns where we do see a lift on RTB compared to other mechanisms. We also see a tremendous powerful lift when it is cross platform, when it is display, when it is mobile and you're reaching those same parameters that you're using for display in mobile as well. So whether it's um, 
you know, UDID and lat -longe and hyperlocal type strategies, where are those users on those different devices and being able to target different devices like the iPhone or the iPad? I think some people are buying RTB, they just don't know it. There's not always transparency or a clear definition. I think there's some DSPs and there are some ad networks, so the brands are actually having the buying done for them on, on RTB. Um, it's just, it, it's not always as, as transparent in the ecosystem as it could and should and really, uh, I think, will be, ultimately, as, as things try and get to more and more transparent. But I'd say the, the, the ratio of people actually have um, buys being done for them on RTB and on exchanges in that sort of way versus what they actually know about, um, there's going to be a delta there. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I'd say, you know, I don't really think mobile RTB is in its infancy in terms of adoption because if you look at the number of impressions that are coming out per month, if you aggregate you know, some of the supply side platforms up here, it's probably in 150 to 200 billion impressions a month at the minimum. I think where it's definitely at its infancy is when you look at data and figuring out how do you leverage third party data and into mobile, because that's still got a lot of a long ways to grow. Um, when you look at location, lat long is awesome, right? But it's probably less than 10% of all mobile supply has lot, lat long on there. So the idea of having you know, a Starbucks ad pop up on an app when you're in front of Starbucks is not going to happen. You know, you need innovation in the space where you need to look at, you know, maybe location as a habit and knowing that, you know, Paul passes a Starbucks every day on the way to work and then pushing a, an ad to him when he's, you know, on, on an app later on in the day and trying to incentivize him to go there sometime, you know, the next morning. I mean, so. it's more than location. We have a lot of advertisers who, um, you know, are able to, to target Wi-Fi during day part, and so they know they're hitting a lot of people th while they're watching TV, and that's probably um, the most valuable uh, impressions or inventory that you can actually get because it's a lot more measurable on the impact than location where you still haven't completed the loop. Um, the attention is there. Uh, there are around events um, and, and certain times of the year where inventory might be uh, a little bit scarce on, on other uh, channels and, and quite frankly with attention and engagement going to mobile, um, there are, are big peaks and, and rushes into the space around whether it be sporting events or uh, Academy Awards or NBA playoffs or opening day and so there's a lot of brands who are not just looking at location but taking all the different data and transparent information about every impression and, and finding uh, you know, their own need whether it's that industry vertical or whatever it is in their business. So just following up on a couple things, so Joy, you mentioned this lift that you've been seeing, is there some, can you go deeper into that? What kind of lift, how is it measured? What are we talking? Are we talking increased click-through rate? Are we talking like uh, brand? Brand awareness and KPIs, right? So uh, we are seeing a shift uh, in RTB in general from performance-based campaigns to brand-based campaigns. So when we talk about lift, we're talking about brand lift. Um, we talk about it in terms of reach, as everybody has expressed, there is a huge amount of volume from the publisher side coming into this space. So um, you are able to measure it based on um, KPIs of the campaign specifically. I'm working with the trading desk. They all have their individual campaign metrics. And then, uh, Paul, you uh, raised an issue that I was going to going to get to later, which is, you know, people who buy direct through these ad, or not direct, but through these ad networks, and they don't know what's happening behind the scenes. Can you dish a little bit more on, on what that marketplace is like after an IO goes out to a, uh, you know? <laughs> well, um, I can tell you how it's changing, and I think uh, if you look at the trajectory of a lot of um, brands and advertisers, and you know, they start off sending RFPs to 10 different uh, ad networks, and and eventually the ones who were spending a, a lot of money uh, started to realize and, and found out through the vendors they were meeting with that a lot of those ad networks were just um, you know, competing on the same exchanges for inventory and they were essentially bidding against themselves. Um, plus they wanted to shift more dollars into the space and they would be in a meeting in order to shift dollars into, into mobile uh, in general. Um, they couldn't just say, I, I gave this much to an ad network and they optimized it. They needed to have a story around why every dollar is making them better and, and smarter. They needed to know, um, you know, uniques and reach and certain metrics across a lot of different publishers and, and you couldn't do that if you're doing an ad network and, and a direct buy. And so transparency, um, if you look at that life cycle in, in mobile, is becoming more and more um, important. So in, in sort of a a desire for transparency, uh, there's been a lot more interest and, and discussions on what's actually happening and, and sort of pulling up the, um, the hood on things and trading desks are, are 
pioneering and educating there as well. Um, and clients are, are asking for it, it too. And so I think um, where that, that was happening, I think just the overall shift away from uh, an, an opaque buying into something that's more transparent is um, you know, shedding light on that. And so it, it's less of, a, of an issue. Is there, you know, are there any scenarios that you guys would see where, uh, from an agency perspective, RTB is not the solution? It's, it's in fact, definitively not the solution? Or something like, you know, like if I'm going to go buy on a CPI, you know, what do I really care if I use you guys or, you know, somebody else will just promise it to me? Or are there anything like, anything that comes to mind? Well, I mean, just the counter the thing is, if you're going to buy on a CPI, you still need to figure out a way to buy as effectively as possible and leverage as much data. And ideally, you'd probably want to use RTB so that you can figure out on an impression by impression basis who you want to bid on for what advertiser. Yeah, I would say the, the flip side of that is where you maybe don't want to use RTB, right? Like if you're doing a custom creative implementation somewhere and you want guaranteed inventory for a time-based event, it's the Super Bowl and it's a special ad unit, then buying direct um, or maybe with an ad network that can execute all of that as a managed service, that might make sense. Um, but you know, for a conference that's about RTB, um, if, if you fundamentally bought into the value propositions of performance and workflow efficiencies that come from using you know, a buy side platform integrated with an open ecosystem of suppliers, if you fundamentally bought into those things, then you know, mobile RTB is here. There's plenty of scale to execute on, and um, I wouldn't see a particular reason to go elsewhere. I think there's, there's always gonna be a direct. I mean, there's always gonna be a need to have a certain amount of impressions, do things that are a bit more um, complicated or, or custom. Even if you just look at the film industry, there's no way that they're going to um, allow it and wait and see how many impressions they could actually get at a certain price point for a film launch. The, the incremental dollars, once that film's actually launched and they can they throw additional dollars, that actually happens almost in real time now, even with TV, where they, they throw extra dollars at it. So I think there's always going to be a, a role for um, some larger direct deal discussions and money flows, as well as some, some things that and budgets that can actually fit into it in, in RTB. But I think the, uh, the shift is more from a, a non-transparent to a, a more transparent way of knowing what you're buying and, and what you're actually getting. Right, just to, just to reiterate that, I think I'm, we're saying the same things here, but really the only reason you would go outside of RTB is if you want an exclusive invert. You want, you want to be on a particular property. Um, but apart from that, it's got everything that you can get from other sources, right, from our networks. And it's transparent. I mean, just to, to reiterate that, you're getting the same parameters, metrics, targeting um, that you can get um, from the ad networks and more. So um, Yeah, it's really about the, the fundamental reach and cross-platform initiatives and the, and the scale, right? They, they can't do that on an ad network, you know? Um, I think that fundamentally that there are differences of what RTB Mobile can provide as a new strategy for, for a buyer. Like, you've, you have so much more options to, to get the reach and scale that, that you couldn't get before. So the reason for the fact that only two or three people maybe are participating is, you know, Mark not out there beating the drum enough, or? I, well, I, I think the, if you just look at the composition of this panel, right, you've got four reps from the supply side, one rep from the buy side, right? There's an asymmetry right now in the marketplace. There's, there's more supply than demand. Um, certainly from, from the kind of advertisers that we work with, the premium brands. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's not just about RTB, but that's about mobile in general. And so, you know, I think actually RTB is going to be an enabler of bringing those band, brand dollars into the market because of the additional transparency um, and the kind of um, performance lift that we can optimize to, uh, which is just a fundamental component of the way that our platform works, right? We, we drive towards the best outcomes for advertisers in a transparent fashion. So I think RTB is actually going to be help enabler of getting more brand spend into the marketplace. But there are definitely some things that we need to, we need to as, a, as a whole ecosystem, innovate on, right? We, over the past 12 months, made, a lot of made up a lot of ground in terms of the supply. 
I think for an advertiser, it's a great time to get in today because of this asymmetry that does exist. But there's some other things that we need to work on as an ecosystem. We need to have you know, uh, richer, more engaging, creative formats. Mm -hmm. uh, the data ecosystem needs to mature. We are seeing some really exciting things going on with location data vendors, um, audience data vendors. Um, there's some clients of ours that I can't really talk in too much detail about that are bringing their own first party data into the mix uh, that are doing some really compelling things with our data management platform. So I think the good news is that mobile is moving along the same trajectory as display. And um, we're going to have in place all of the fundamental building blocks for those brand dollars to come in and spend in this channel uh, when you know they're ready to adopt. And the clients that I mentioned and the executions that I mentioned, those are, those are, those are advertisers that are leaning forward that they want to learn and they want to um, develop an expertise in mobile so that they can have a competitive advantage ultimately. And that's, um, I think that's why we are here on this panel because that's the bet that we've made at turn is that we're going to support that. And Mark, while there is an abundance of supply, it really is about quality, right? So the publishers that are putting their inventory on mobile RTB are a lot different than it was a year ago. Um, they also have the ability to do things like private marketplaces, as we saw in the past panels. And really, what's the vision of mobile RTB when it comes to transparency, creating deal parameters, and being able to execute on that? I had to throw it in. <laughs> well, so what was different 12 months ago for these big you know, quality content providers that's, that's changed now? Just demand and they need to monetize or what is it? Um, no, it's actually, I think, consumer usage of devices and how consumers are um, using their devices and then advertisers becoming more smart with their data, right? How are they retail, custom, retail advertisers, for example, and the way that they're re reaching consumers and um, take, you know, Macy's, for example. I mean, it's a, such a commonality in terms of their couponing and how they reach their audience. You know, we're all ingesting this on a daily basis now that we're walking down the streets with our eyes glued to our phones. So the behaviors of the consumers have changed, and the concept of personalizing your ads is also changing. And how you're able to reach that audience is basically going to come down to how good your technology is to reach that audience. I mean, I, I would say, though, that you know, the premium publishers aren't moving as fast as, as some of the mobile-only or mobile app startups that uh, you know, are only focusing on um, at monetization, there's still sales teams that are uh, cautious of having uh, an indirect sales revenue stream. There's still product people who are cautious of uh, having been burned by integrating a lot of SDKs and um, and third parties into their app and, and that hurt performance. And there was a, a ton of uh, people doing the wrong things and in, in the wrong ways that uh, has made a lot of people wary in, in just the ad network world and where people were for the past few years. So I think the, the smart publishers who are, are still uh, aggressive in the space um, are seeing that there's so much attention and, and uh, you know, usage going on in mobile that they need to do it right and they need to do it well and that in, in many ways if you look and you are able to show an advertiser what they're buying transparently across directly and indirectly it's actually better for the salespeople than a, a blind ad network or having that inventory unsold um, that there are uh, some some long-term strategic advantages of, of having both ends in place and, and being there early and seeing historical data of how things work rather than let the demand side get ahead and uh, have a lot more information on what the impression is worth versus what you know. Yeah, so I'd say a year ago, the majority of the demand that we would see coming in on RTB on, on the mobile front were 90% of that was coming from um, mobile demand sources, right? Mobile ad networks. Today, it's probably closer to you know 60% of that coming just from mobile. The other 40% is coming from online DSPs, um, typically online ad networks, right? So it could be someone in a network like Radium One or, or ValueClick that were typically online and then jumped into mobile. And I think RTB makes it really easy from a technology standpoint to jump into to mobile, extend over without having to do custom integrations with multiple partners. Yeah, and, and, and on the reverse side, right? Like the, the standards are what's making this ecosystem open, right? Open R, R, RTB spec 
most of our partners uh, support that, and that makes it really easy for us to integrate them in, um, and and also for us to you know receive parameters that uh, we can decision on. And I think that that's one of the things that's really helping this ecosystem open up is, is those standards. There's also standards for rich media that are gonna make publishers a whole lot more money um, as, they, as they get more broadly adopted uh, by both the supply and demand sides. Um, and I would say you know, to you, Krishna, like, where was our spend with you a year ago? Negligible, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 now, you know, you guys return my calls. So I think I think it's safe to say that, you know, the demand is coming in and it's coming in not only from, you know, the CPI or the native mobile buyer, but also um, the brands. Um, we have time we have time for questions. Um okay. So I just wanna ask one quick follow up. Um, you guys kinda glossed over the targeting issue with um, without cookies, but I assume you all have different solutions to that, whether it's device fingerprinting or MAC addresses. But I think it's very encouraging if you're able to um, create a market and demand without having cookies that maybe there's some, um, you know, opportunity for display when, if, if and when that should happen. My question is, um, on demand, where do you see it coming from? I mean, Krishna, you talked a little bit about it just now. Um, but where else is it coming from? Mark, you talked about a lot of uh, location-based, um, you know, retail type activity. Um, the thing I love about mobile is it's not just display in a hand. It's in places, it could be shopper media, it could be retail, it could be a lot of different um, experiences. Are you seeing, where are you seeing demand come from, as nascent as it is? There's a, there's a lot of buys from um, premium and tier one uh, commerce players that are looking to get app downloads as they're starting to see a ton of actual purchases through iPads and, and smartphones and the, the price they're willing to pay to acquire those users and be able to send them uh, you know, push message updates and have a, a place on their, on their dashboard is, uh, is a huge spend that's, that's ramping up. But I'd say 58 to 60 of the top 100 advertisers um, are on you know our platform and RTB, so every industry vertical is is doing something in, in some way uh, or the other. There's clearly still a bit of gaming and app download and long tail um, uh, download spend, and there are certain you know DSPs and certain uh, types of apps that uh, perform well on that. But you're you're probably seeing the the brand spend, the commerce app uh, tier one download, um, and the and that sort of long tail app download is the three major segments. And we definitely see um, automotive as a, a trailblazer in digital and uh, seeing it on RTB Mobile, um, as well as retail, uh, heavy sector in retail. And um, there was one other. Automotive. Finance. What's that? Finance. Oh, finance, yeah. I mean, I, I just to reiterate, I mean, 2012 was definitely uh, around um, CPI, so it was downloads of applications. A lot of those were games, entertainment type applications, but we're seeing just diversity happening. It's uh, retail is, is, a, is a huge one, especially around key, um, uh, key times, uh, times of the year. Um, and, you know, other, other verticals are expanding very, very quickly. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, the, the movement, the transition from performance to, to brand, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing that's uh, very encouraging this year. Hi, Tim Sullivan from Sendine. Um, we're an agency, we're all in travel, and we actually have kind of been getting our feet wet in real-time bidding on mobile over the past nine months to a year with Turn. And we've had some great success there. The real challenge, and you guys touched on this, for us has really been the creative. We see great results in the client wants to spend more, but they don't want to do static banners. They want a rich, immersive experience. And the documentation, the to present them with something that's easy and repeatable that they're excited about, it seems like it's all over the map, depending on what vendor you go to, who's willing to help, how much you have to spend to get that help. Can you guys talk a little bit more about how you're, how and if you're focusing on the creative to kind of provide that to clients who want to spend more, but there's there are, there's a challenge in us helping them get there. Yeah, I can I can take that one. Um, so I mean, there's this is not new information. Thank you for sharing it. We've heard that before. There's I mean, there's certainly a challenge in producing some of this 
Bridge Media Creative and uh, getting it distributed, you know, ubiquitously across uh, all of the all of the inventory. Right. I think the, the the good news there is that we're actually further along as an ecosystem than we were 12 months ago. Um, there are you know several players now that um, have technologies that that you guys can use or you can outsource to you know an agency to develop for you, um, and then the partners have certified those vendors um, for uh, for the, for their exchanges. So um, I think everybody probably recognizes the importance of raising the bar in terms of the creative, um, and that that especially. For, for these guys that are trying to improve yield for publishers is an important lever for getting uh, those dollars in. Um, you know, that's you know that's not necessarily our business to develop the creative, but we definitely want to, as an open platform, support those vendors that um, are getting the most traction in the marketplace, so that you can have an easy glide path to. Um, getting those creatives live and and bidding with them once you've you've made that investment. Yeah, so th things are things are definitely getting better. Um, you know, uh, before you'd have to if you were working with a rich media vendor, everyone had their own SDK. You had to make sure that SDK were in you know either certified with platforms or integrated with applications. And and sometimes advertisers and agencies were taking bets, hoping that you know they would get the reach and and the SDKs would never even be, be live. Um, you know, now the MMA and, and, and all of us and everyone is, is sort of getting behind um, the MRAID standards and HTML5. So things like that should definitely make it easier um, to do rich media, especially when you look at rich media from the standpoint of different platforms, different screen sizes, making immersive creative ads that will scale um, across the board. So. Yeah, it's not new to RTB either. I think in mobile in general, it, it was it's been an issue, even if. You know your your campaign sizes have to scale up from somewhere, and if you have even a you know hundred two hundred thousand dollar campaign, um, you can still only afford the two guys in the basement probably to do the the ad creative alone. So um, it's something that I think from uh, you know to have creative that actually works and is effective is something that there are concerns about. Um, I think in general, if you look at mobile uh, during the last downturn, biggest growth rates every single year, triple digit growth rates of media spend. Um, it's key to global uh, media spend, which is what every agency is looking to do. And so as a result, there's a ton of money in uh, the ad tech space and in the mobile realm to, to deal with this measurement data. Um, and so these, the three issues are, are, are clear and I've been around for a couple of years, I think having seen the, the, the hockey stick and the revenue and the growth that's happened and everything's happening faster than the desktop that there's just as much money being spent by people on the stage and others to, to kind of address it. And publishers are increasingly becoming more comfortable with that when they have controls like brand controls in place, um, when they can see creatives and be able to preview them, or if there's um, specific um, transparency that you've negotiated up front, then they're definitely more open to cutting edge ideas. Uh, if I could just ask one more, it's kind of a non sequitur, but um, how big do you guys think augmented reality will be? And what? What's the likelihood that people will be able to do real-time bidding on every conceivable place? That's the future, cross-platform. Identifying the consumer and where they are at what time and what place and what device and knowing, knowing your consumer. And that's really the intelligence of the data that um, both publishers and advertisers bring to the table. And RTB is a gateway to make that transaction occur. I don't know, I saw a very limited use of augmented reality, unless you want to kill the person as they're walking across the, the street, which I think most brands would probably be a little bit um, wary of. Uh, you know, I saw some really awful executions of it. I think um, there's a, a, a time and, and a place for it, but given how many opportunities there are in mobile and all the low-hanging fruit and how resource constrained just to, to handle those sort of things and how fast everything is moving, um, I doubt that it's in the top 10 of, of most people's product roadmaps. I thought, Paul, you, I thought Paul, you were going to say um, go Google goggles and yeah. RTB. I did joke before that I thought <laughs> in six months, Google goggles and Apple wristwatch would be the future of uh, RTB, but um, it's moving fast, but probably not that fast. Okay. All right, well, I want to thank you guys, and I want to thank the audience for sticking it out. That was a lot of technical and terse material, especially in the afternoon sessions. And just to sum up, um, two things. Facebook is a huge behemoth, and uh, pineapples.
So I want to thank you all for sticking it out. Thank you.